We are familiar with rockets leaving the Earth to explore other worlds. What we are not familiar with are space explorers from other worlds coming to Earth. Former NASA space scientist Maurice Chatelain says there is no doubt that aliens have walked among us. By connecting the sites of ancient Greek temples, Chatelain has interpreted a pattern so complex he is convinced it could only be the result of an alien influence. Another scientist says that prehistoric Indian rock carvings found in the western United States are actually electronic symbols known to every physics student today. Is it possible that our planet was an early destination for Earth visitors? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Death Valley, California. One of the most inhospitable areas on Earth. Ground temperatures can reach 170 degrees. Dehydration can occur in minutes. It's the sort of place where life should not exist. Yet, one form of life now dominates this area. The burrow, left here to die by miners nearly a century ago. An incredibly adaptable beast. The burrow not only survived, but even multiplied. Is there an analogy between the burrow in Death Valley and man on the Earth? Was life left on Earth by an alien exploration millions of years ago? How can we account for an unusual discovery made in recent years? From Utah, a fossil, a shellfish that has been extinct for 400 million years. Nothing surprising about it, except it was found embedded in what appear to be shoe prints. Could these prints have been left behind by Earth visitors? Maurice Chatelain, the former NASA space scientist who helped man reach the moon and author of Our Ancestors Came From Outer Space, definitely believes that aliens have visited the Earth. It seems that the first landing uh, occurred about 300,000 years ago. Chatelain believes that ancient cuneiform tablets discovered in Iraq and only recently deciphered, give detailed accounts of aliens arriving on Earth and engaging in crossbreeding experiments with humans. And in the beginning, the experiments were not very successful. They obtained the Neanderthal man, which, has a, which was a very big man, but not very intelligent. And they had to make uh, many, many experiments before they could succeed. And this occurred about 60,000 years ago. At that time, they obtained the Homo sapiens man, or modern man, which you can also call the Cro-Magnon man. And this was uh, a very uh, bright success, and because it was almost exactly uh, like modern man today. Some people ask me uh, how it could be that a scientist like me, who has been trained in the physics and mathematics and who is working on the Apollo program to go on the moon, could believe in uh, stories of uh, astronauts coming from, out, from outer space and landing on the Earth. Actually, it's very simple, because in the beginning, I was very skeptical. But uh, little by little, I started discovering my own evidence. And uh, I was convinced, there's no doubt about it, astronauts from outer space have landed on the Earth. One of Chatelain's discoveries was made while examining satellite photos of the Aegean Sea. At first, 
there didn't seem to be anything significant. But then, Chatelaine began to see a pattern emerge. By connecting the locations of 12 sacred Greek temples, Chatelaine formed the giant Maltese cross more than 300 miles wide. Chatelaine says the Greeks didn't know of the cross, and its perfectly formed dimensions could have only been laid out with the use of an orbiting satellite, like the one used to photograph the area you are now looking at. Throughout history, civilization builds on top of civilization. This we know. Once a site is sacred, it remains sacred for succeeding generations. Did the ancients build on these sites because Earth visitors had selected them? I think the cross was left there as a hint to show a modern man that there are powers beyond his own. To find out, we presented the mystery to Dr. Lawrence Clevenson, a statistical mathematician with California State University, Northridge. What I've done is to program this computer to randomly place 12 points on the screen. In a sense, then, the screen represents that area of the Aegean Sea where the 12 temples are, and each point that the computer randomly chooses represents a random choice of a temple. And I also asked the computer to count the number of symmetric patterns, like the cross, and the odds against getting a symmetric pattern are approximately three quadrillion to one. So that if the computer produced a pattern, a randomly chosen pattern, every single second, it would take approximately 95 million years for it to produce a symmetric pattern. Another discovery of Chatelaine's is tied to the enigmatic Egyptian pyramids. Why were they laid out astronomically so that passageways are aligned with certain stars? Could the pyramids, like the Maltese cross, have some connection to Earth visitors? This satellite photo of France reveals another pyramid. It's not yet visible. But when you connect the locations of three prehistoric stone temples, like the one at Stonehenge, it magically appears. A giant triangle hundreds of miles across that is proportional to the Pyramid of Cheops in Egypt. Another unexplained phenomenon of the French triangle. When you superimpose the locations of known modern uranium mines, they align themselves along the sides. Could Earth visitors have had the same need for the precious metal, uranium, as we have today? Could France have been the site of an extraterrestrial mining operation? I think there might be another use for the French Triangle, because its sides, uh, the sides of the Triangle, could have been used as uh, beacons for uh, landing of the spacecraft, like uh, re-entry corridors, similar to those uh, we were using in the Apollo program, you know? It was called a footprint, too. It was the, land, the, the area on the surface of the Earth where the spacecraft could land. There's another interesting point about the triangle. It is that if you follow one of the lines, it leads you halfway across the world to the Nazca plain. In search of teams have explored the Nazca Plain in Peru and have yet to fully understand these drawings and patterns. Certainly this does not appear to be a landing base. Many believe Earth Base 1 was in the Western Hemisphere. Not here, but in the southwestern United States. The life of the American Indian has been well documented by modern archaeologists. Indians are a proud people who adapted well to a harsh environment. A people with primitive beliefs based on what experts considered superstition and myth. We have long been taught 
that the Indian was the first man in the Western Hemisphere, that he came here from Asia, having crossed the land bridge that once connected Alaska and Siberia. The crossing was supposed to have taken place 20,000 years ago. If this is true, then how can we explain a skull found in California? It has been dated back at least 48,000 years. Some believe the presence of man in America goes back a quarter of a million years. If the American Indian did not enter this continent by way of a land bridge, then how did he get here? Hey, Naso. If we look to Indian legends, which have been passed down from generation to generation, we find a possible answer. In many tribes, a common story is told that Indians came from other worlds, traveling to Earth to find a better life. We cannot easily dismiss such folklore, for no matter what the language or where the tribe is from, the story is the same. In one tribe, all things were said to have begun on the first world, a great rock in a sea of mist. Is this a reference to the planet Venus, which is recorded in the legends of many different peoples? From the misty world, the spirits traveled to the blue world. Is this the blue world the legend refers to? Modern man didn't call the Earth blue until he had the benefit of photos taken from space. And how is it that the Apache god and Egyptian god, Amun-Ra, are similar in name and appearance? Could Amun-Ra have been a space traveler who visited both peoples? There are also identical references to the boat of the sun. Might not a spaceship be referred to as a boat of the sun? And how is it that the Hopi symbol for Earth is identical to symbols found in the Mediterranean? At the end of this hall in the Arizona State Museum, an artifact so unusual, scientists are uncertain what to do with it. It's called Elephant Slab. And carved on it, strange markings that resemble some alien alphabet. Among the mysterious symbols, one clear figure. An elephant? If an Indian carved this stone, how did he know what an elephant looked like? An animal only found in Africa and Asia. To the Hopi Indian, the Kachina dolls are representations of spirits. The Hopis claim that some of the Kachinas are spirits from other worlds who came to Earth to teach the Indians agriculture, weaving, and the necessary arts. Are they spirits or space travelers? Some Hopis claim these could actually represent alien beings. In the ceremonies of the Zuni tribe, it was customary to cover the body with a thick layer of mud. Another part of the ceremonial costume was a rather unique head mask. No one can satisfactorily explain why it resembles a space-helmeted astronaut. In another tradition, gourds were fashioned into peculiar shapes. Was it merely a coincidence that some of the gourds resembled UFOs? The Indians referred to them as such and used them in their ceremonies. Not normally associated with the American Indian is the boomerang. Yet it was a part of their culture as it was of the Aborigines of Australia. Seemingly simple, 
The boomerang is a highly sophisticated aerodynamic foil, a flying wing. The Indians say they were taught to use the boomerang by gods who came from the stars. If the Indians had left us written records, we might have the answers to some of these mysteries. Obviously, that is not the case. Yet, in their own way, the Indians did leave us valuable information. It's what we call their art, where they chiseled at stone, painted on rocks, and scraped the earth. Many of the Indians were accomplished artists, as evidenced by these accurate representations of wildlife. which makes it difficult to explain these pictures. And from all over the Western United States, strange figures that bear uncanny resemblances to spacemen. Could these drawings indicate a connection between the Indians of the American West and travelers from other worlds? Hoping for an answer, we spoke with Preston Monongi, member of the secretive Hopi Kachina Society. The legends uh, definitely uh, tell of, the, uh, of uh, these spacecraft and people riding in them and uh, uh, making contact with us, which they have uh, several times uh, in the, in the just in the past, not too long ago. I would like to really go into it more, but I cannot go into it more because our religion forbids it. And so therefore I can't uh, uh, go into it any further than I've already gone into it. Of all the Indian petroglyphs, none perhaps is quite so unexplainable as these. No one has been able to decipher them. Los Angeles engineer Charles Ruggles thinks he has discovered the key to the mysterious petroglyphs. These are scientific drawings. They could be taken right out of a physics textbook. They show sine waves, they show triangle waves, they show square waves, uh, they show electromagnetic circuitry, they show switching, they show almost everything that we could think of in a modern electronics and electromagnetic laboratory. These petroglyphs tell a very intriguing story, and it's very much worth investigating. The Indian folklore tells about two flying objects that collided in space over Death Valley, and one of them fell in Mustard Canyon. The folklore doesn't tell where the other one fell. Now, were these two objects which made forced landings or actually fell, there was damage. And someone came to repair them. When these alien people disassembled these spacecraft, they did it in such a way that they could hopefully reassemble them. And as they disassembled it, it was recorded on apparatus such as this or other forms of uh, communication. To the Indians, these symbols which these aliens made were the symbols of the gods and magic to them. And that's why they reproduced them in the area. One of the most unusual reports in recent years tells of a discovery made near the Coso mountain range in Southern California. As represented here for In Search Of, three rock hounds were out looking for interesting samples to add to their collections.
had already been looking for hours that hot day in July. What they found looked innocent enough, a geode common to that area. Yet, it somehow seemed different. Later, after they saw the rock in half, they felt they had made a unique discovery. That inside was a strange ceramic-like material resembling some electrical device, like a spark plug. How old was it? While the findings have never been verified, the rock hounds claimed that a geologist placed the age of the object at 500,000 years. X-ray results were published, and they were astonishing. The object did not appear to be naturally formed. No one today can explain its existence. Is this confirmation that Earth Base 1 was located in the southwestern United States? There have been many theories which say that life has been deliberately sent to Earth from another planet. Some experts ridicule these ideas and such theories might have remained unbelievable, except for disclosures such as these, which continue to be found year after year.